and friends of YouTube uh, sorry I haven't got on this sooner I, I did the box unboxing of this what three weeks ago and uh, just I've been busy just really busy and uh, working a lot and uh, had a lot of stuff going on uh, but now I've got a bunch of time off for the holidays I'm off for the next uh, five days in a row and next weekend I'm off for four and a half days and the weekend after that for four and a half days so I've got some build time um, I've had uh, quite a few s people, some couple that I have never talked to before, and then some of my friends are asking me when I'm going to get started on this uh, Edge 540. Uh, well, we're going to do it. I'm going to start on it uh, today and uh, see what we can get done. I, I don't know if I'll get it finished because I'm going to take it pretty slow and easy because of my friend Virgil that gave me the plane, and uh, I'm going to build it. Uh, real thorough for him so he can build his he wants to follow along and build his just like this one so uh, we're gonna get started on this thing and see what we can gain in the next couple days uh, and uh, I will post a couple videos hopefully by the end of the weekend at least I'll I'm, I'm gonna try my best to keep them 30 minutes or less but it's really hard to do anything at all in that amount of time and film it so they may be a little longer and I apologize but uh, for the ones of you that are anxious to see this, here we go. Uh, I want to show you a few things first and then we'll get started on the build. Okay, before we get started here, building this Edge 540, uh, I'm going to give you a little sneak preview. This is a Glass Air Sportsman. Comes with the regular landing gear on it. Floats are extra. It's a 71 inch wingspan, 120 size. Uh, Next week, Byron and I are both ordering this plane. One of us is going to do something different, or both of us, to the bottom side of our wing so we can tell them apart better. Uh, but anyway, we will get these on order next week. <clears throat> hoping to also put a DLE 20cc in this one. So this will be another build later this winter that you guys can uh, be looking forward to. Can't wait to get my hands on this plane. I like flying water planes anyway. I will fly it with the wheels for a little while and get used to it and then I'll put the floats on it next spring. But anyway, just kind of give you a little heads up there, something to look forward to hopefully uh, sometime in the spring. We'll get them ordered next week and start gathering engines and servos and parts for it and then we'll we'll get it built after we get done with a couple more we got here. Okay, as we get started on this thing, I just wanted to show you a few little things and this a lot of this I'm putting in here is for my friend Virgil. Uh, and so I'm adding some extra stuff here and anybody else that's new to this hobby you can learn a few things here this is just on the stuff that I like to use I'm going to tell you a few places that I get it you can save yourself some money and a lot of it is to show Virgil what he needs so we'll uh, we'll kind of get started here um, the servos I'm going to use in this are uh, JR DS821HV they make a regular DH, DS821 and it's the same thing except the HV is for high voltage. You can run these servos directly off of a 7.4 volt rate, uh, LiPo battery without a voltage regulator. So I'm going to be running a LiPo battery uh, uh, 7.4 2 cell uh, probably around a 2200 somewhere along there 2000 2200 milliamp hour this will run my electronics these at 6 volt or 7.4 volt are 88 ounce torque this plane I can't remember what it calls for for sure but it's I wouldn't put under a 75 ounce torque servo in this plane uh, so this is what I'm using now Virgil you don't have to use these I would I would use at least a 75 ounce torque uh, I know you said you had some servos and stuff, but this is what I'm using. Um, uh, I get these 
from you can buy JR servos from Horizon Hobby and I love Horizon Hobby don't get me wrong I'm not trying to cut them out of any business but I get these servos from uh, hang on just a second okay sorry about that back to the servos uh, a lot of my servos especially these DAS 821 high voltage by the way these are the same price as a regular DS821 they're both $29.95 or $29.99 a piece but where I get them I get free shipping you'll pay about the same price at Horizon or any other hobby shop but you'll pay freight this way I get free shipping um, and I get these from a place on eBay called Power Hobby and it's power under slash hobby on eBay site and they, I get a lot of stuff from him a lot of other servos but mostly these and they have free shipping so it, in the long run it saves you a lot of money if you build as many planes as, as Bill and I do and all of our other friends we save a lot of money by not paying shipping uh, and I will order stuff from places like that when I can now I'm running these on uh, elevator rudder ailerons and then of course on my throttle uh, I'm just I'm running a cheaper one I think it's a Ness 507JR you don't need a whole lot of torque on the throttle um, okay another thing that I I like that I get uh, is these switches and they're heavy duty switches and uh, I've got a charge jack built in I've got the little door that closes over that but here's what I like about these new ones how bright that LED light is. I like these especially on my gas models on my ignition system. On your regular electronic switch it's not as important because nine times out of ten if you leave a switch on turn your radio on you're off your plane starts chattering or buzzing you can hear it. When you turn your ignition if you forget to turn your ignition switch off you have no way of knowing. If you leave that on which I have done once and run your LiPo battery down past a certain point it will ruin it and you'll be buying another thirty forty dollar battery so uh, these switches here are really really good for ignition on the gas planes and that's what I'm gonna put this on I'll probably use just a regular one on the electronic switch but this one's going on my electronic ignition because we are running a gas engine on this uh, I get these switches these with the light are ten dollars the ones without the light are eight dollars and I get them from badbradgraphics.com just on the internet uh, you can pull up his website he's got a phone number on there just give him a call Brad carries tons of stuff he carries uh, heavy duty Y harnesses any size he carries uh, tons and tons of accessories plus he does really good graphics a lot of you have seen my graphics on some of my planes but he, uh, he has just about any length of uh, extension that you can think of for three dollars a piece it doesn't matter if they're five inches long or twelve inches long they're three dollars a piece and as many as you can shove in a padded envelope he'll ship for three dollars so that's very very reasonable the switches are um, ten dollars for the ones with the light eight dollars for the one without the light um, I don't think there's anything else I get from Brad I get a lot of stuff from Bad Brad he's a good guy uh, just give him a call look his website up give him a call and uh, try him out sometime um, some of the other stuff that I will be using on this the plane comes with a plastic two blade nose cone I don't like plastic nose cones and I like to run three blade I know the two blade as far as 3D and stuff perform better I'm not much of a 3D pilot I like to fly an airplane so I want the three blade on this type of plane because it's more scale realism to a real plane I just like the looks of them and they perform fine for the way I fly them but anyway I get these uh, Pro Spin, they have three or four different brands. But this is a Pro Spin uh, aluminum spinner. I have tons of these on my planes. Uh, they come with an adapter. Of course, now this one I had to get a different adapter because the DLE 20 uh, is a metric bolt, so I had to buy another adapter for like three dollars. But these these spinners are like I don't know twenty eight dollars, twenty six dollars for a three blade, twenty less than that for a two blade. Um, this one's a two and three quarter. But I get those and a lot of other accessories. Uh, from uh, atsrcplanes.com atsrcplanes.com uh, they're great people they have a lot of good stuff they carry a lot of accessories not a whole lot of planes and stuff a few electrics and a couple helicopters but they have tons of electric stuff uh, accessories nose cones uh, spinners whatever you want to call them uh, chargers, lipo chargers, just fuel pumps, good prices on uh, 
uh, well, yeah, gasoline fuel pumps. You guys know how high those are. You're going to pay $75, $80. Some of them are more than that. Some of them are over $100 for a, a gas fuel pump electric on a tank. They have nice electric fuel pumps for, I want, I believe it's $29.95, 30 bucks, uh, for these fuel pumps and stuff. And you can really save a lot of money if you shop around. Another thing they carry is the fuel dots. I really like these. The back of this unscrews. You, you drill a hole in your, uh, cowl or wherever you want it and you mount this part. It's got a rubber O-ring there. And then your, uh, fuel, fuel line pulls out of that and your stopper and you push it back up in there. It just makes a nice neat fitting uh, when they come out. I also get those from ATS RC planes and another thing I use this for without the fuel dot is I use it on nitro planes where my needle valve cable comes out of my cowl and it that keeps it from vibrating against the fiberglass and chipping the paint and stuff around. It works really well for that too so they have a lot of neat stuff. Um, Another thing I like to use, which I'll be using on this plane, is I make my own servo leads. Uh, there's a little short one that I made. And I get the wire I buy from Tower Hobbies. That's $17 and something for a 50 foot roll. Lasts a long time. It's good. Heavy heavy gauge, 20 gauge wire. The, all the tips and stuff that I use, you can get all different colors. And here's the little brass fittings that you put in on your wires. And there's the, the tips. And then for a... a female that, that's got the covers that goes over. You can get them in yellow, blue, green, I think red and black, all kinds of them. Uh, the pliers uh, to crimp them with. Those, the crimping pliers and all the tips I get from off of eBay from a gentleman. His site is Cap 10 Knight. C-A-P and the number 10 K-N-I-G-H-T Cap 10 Knight. He has tons of stuff like this and, and not only just this he has lots and lots of other stuff too but we get these real reasonable from him and there again we save a lot of money on a lot of this stuff his freight's real shipping and if you buy a whole bunch of different things just ask him to send you an invoice and he'll combine shipping and save you a lot of money um, these little you're going to want a pair of uh, wire strippers I got these at a local uh, shop here around town and, uh, but you can get a good set at you know Sears or I like these little small set. It's uh, it's got all the different sizes to strip your wires and cutters and stuff on it. But if you decide to make some of your own leads, which is a lot of fun, you'll need all that. And then a lot of my leads, like uh, coming out of the wings, I solder those joints with shrink wrap. But uh, anyway, all right, let's move on here um, to what we're going to use. Uh, we are putting a DLE 20 gasoline engine on this. The DLE 20 will mount in the same uh, motor mount as an OS 124 stroke. And the DLE 20 gas has slightly more power. Uh, it's, I don't know, maybe not quite another half a horsepower, about a, maybe close to a third of a horsepower more. And it's way less. I mean, it's like 249, 259, something like that in the OS 124 stroke, which I like. I have two of them, but they're $415 gas is a whole lot cheaper to run so I'm switching all my 120, 90, 120 size over to these so we're just going to start out with this. Alright, if you decide to go with gas on this plane your fuel tank will come with a stopper and all the tubing for it. That is for nitro. Do not put gasoline in this. It will melt every bit of that and cause you all kinds of problems. The tank is okay. It's a type of plastic that's okay for fuel. What you'll have to do is buy you, I already have this one out of another tank, but you can buy you another, uh, it's a little kit, and I, I can't remember, I want to say like six bucks, five, six bucks. Uh, Sullivan brand is what I get from Tower Hobbies. And it comes with a stopper that's made out of a different kind of rubber and brass tubing and uh, that you will want to use on your tank if you're using gasoline instead of nitro. So keep that in mind. You cannot put gasoline in a nitro fitting. It will melt it. Uh, the other thing you're going to want, you're going to have to have gasoline fuel line. You can't use regular uh, nitro fuel line. It will eat it up. You have to use gasoline rated uh, fuel line. Uh, so be sure and get you some of that. One thing you have to be careful of, the, the gasoline line tends to get stiff pretty quick, real stiff. Uh, I normally on my nitro planes, I like these little uh, bronze filters that are 
they're kind of a clunk filter all in one they're okay for nitro fuel line but your gas line is really stiff and it's going to get stiffer so I like these big heavy clunks for that and so if you're flying and your line is real stiff and you go inverted and your clunk doesn't fall to the bottom of the tank which is actually the top when you're inverted you're going to lose fuel flow and your engine's going to start sputtering and possibly die so you want a really heavy fuel clunk on this gas line uh, we will put all brand new line on this uh, you can use a two line and just use a T this is not a pressurized tank your gasoline engines have fuel pumps built into them so you don't have pressurized off the muffler so you can put a T on this put your fuel line off of this uh, and fill it and draw your fuel back out um, okay uh, another thing we've got on here this this plane comes with a plastic tube with a little metal rod which is pretty flexible we may be able to use it for our throttle linkage uh, this plane is set up so the engine is set down from the side about a 45 degree for a nitro engine the head would be right down here we are going to have to re-drill these holes and turn the motor mount so the head on the gasoline engine is completely vertical well to do that that may alter where the fuel line or the fuel carburetor linkage comes through so we may have to buy uh, Virgil you may have to get one too I've already got a couple here but it's a plastic tube with a cable in it and this is very very flexible which means you can route it you know up and over and around stuff and it still won't put a lot of torque it won't bind on your servo so there's a good chance that we may have to use this when we and I won't know till I get this motor mounted on here uh, the other thing is my prop I'm using I'm using a master air screw uh, three blade series this is a 15.7 says I can run up to an 18 inch and 18 7 or 8 on a two blade so 15.7 should run fine it depends on what I get on my RPMs I may have to drop down to a 14 8 or 14 7 I have both but I'm, I'm hoping I can run this 15 7 on here and still get plenty of RPM okay that's uh, some of the goodies that I'm using uh, like I say, Virgil, you don't have to get exactly what I've got. Uh, I sent you some fuel line, and I've sent your fuel tank. I mailed it out today. There's a gasoline stopper in there for you. And uh, I don't think there's but one clunk. You'll have to get some clunks. I didn't think about that. And then your servos, like I said, just be sure and use on this particular plane. I would not use less than 75-ounce torque. Uh, I'm running a 7.4 LiPo battery on my servos which will run them at 88 you don't have to if you don't want to you can run a nickel metal or NICAD 6 volt and you'll still get 88 ounce torque off of, off of these right here uh, I am running a, a nickel metal uh, which is what they recommend or NICAD on the ignition system on this I'm running a 2000 milliamp uh, nickel metal on that 6 volt so I don't have to have a voltage regulator on this gasoline plane. Now on my 50 cc's and stuff I use a voltage regulator and I run lipos on both of them but on this one this will be fine. Uh, I've got my friend Ken he runs those 6 volt nickel metals on his big 50 cc's and he's never had any problem with them but anyway that's a bunch of the goodies that uh, that you'll need and uh, you, and you like I say you can switch around brands or whatever I think I've got you fixed up on the fuel supply I don't know, you can do whatever you want to on a nose cone. You do not have to put a three blade on this if you don't want to. You can run a two blade. This is just what I prefer, but I'm, and I'm just telling you where I get them. So, uh, you got my number when we get started on this. When you start on yours, if you have any questions, give me a call, man. All right, let's get started building this thing. Okay, we're uh, ready to get started on this thing. And uh, I, I stuck the motor mount on here. Uh, this is mainly for Virgil. I just lightly bolted on here to see what the width was this is set up for a 60 size engine frame uh, a 124 stroke and the DLE 20 is 2.28 but center holes across here uh, I've got a digital dial calipers that I use and uh, anyway it is the same exact pattern as a 124 stroke uh, so what we're going to have to do, the engine won't fit between here, so we're not only going to have to re-drill these, but we're going to have to widen them out a little bit when we turn them around. So uh, I'm going to have to, what I'm going to do is take these off, and I'll show you when I do it. I'll take these off, and we'll clamp them to the engine, and then center it. The, the center of your back plate, or the center of the carburetor on this one, needs to be right in line with the center of that hole right there. 
So we'll get these off of here and clamp them to the motor and see what we can figure. And then I'll make a pattern to uh, drill our holes with. Okay, Virgil, um, we're going to really have to do some modification on this firewall. We're going to have to move the, uh, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully there's enough light. Right there's a little plate right there that I guess is where the head of the fuel tank is supposed to go, but it doesn't line up. So anyway, we're going to have to take this out and uh, build, move it back and build a bracket across here, and I'll show you how to do that. And the reason for is this uh, 20cc DLE has a carburetor mounted on the back of it. Well, where it's supposed to go to from the thrust washer is about right here. So what we're going to have to do is cut out a large, after we get our holes drilled, we're going to have to cut out a large square hole. The carburetor is actually going to fit back inside here in this cavity, but it should still get plenty of air. There's vent holes all in this tops open. So we're going to have to do quite a bit of modification to get this DLE 20 on this plane. Uh, it's a little more difficult than some, but uh, another thing I had to do, the, the, the tank you have that I sent you is identical to this. The gas stopper that I sent you is a brand new Sullivan. I don't know how thick it is. Uh, this one was kind of short that I had so my lid to my tank was about that long so I had to take a Dremel with a disc and cut that off and after I cut it then I did I put that on there and kind of flushed it down like that uh, and then I had to take a 5 8 uh, stone that just barely fit inside here had just enough room to get it in there and turn it on and I just I kind of wallowed that out just a little bit until I got the stopper to snap in there and of course that's it's good and snug so when I tighten that screw up it's going to tighten up really well uh, that's what I had to do to my tank so I'm not sure it depends on your stopper the thickness uh, that you have this one is um, if you go in inches from the back of the from the back of the rubber there to the inside of the tank you're going to have to have one two uh, a quarter of an inch so I had to shorten that stem on this quite a bit but it's it's going to work fine now the only problem I have is I've got plastic dust inside here so I'm going to have to thoroughly rinse this tank out with fuel I don't want to use water because I don't want any moisture in there so I'm going to use gasoline I'll take it outside and I will rinse this several times to get all of that uh, plastic dust out of there because you do not want that getting into your engine and your carburetor and stuff. So <coughs> you can blow some of it out with an air hose, uh, but then we'll have to uh, rinse it out really, really good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount these to the engine and I'll get a pattern off of that and then we'll get our holes drilled and then we'll see what kind of a hole we're going to have to have uh, for that carburetor to fit in. Uh, wow, this is going to be fun because the way that's going to sit, those screws are going to stick up right there. So we may have to do some modification to this whole box right here to get this thing to fit. This plane is actually made for a 61 to a 91 two stroke uh, or up to a 100cc four stroke, but uh, we're definitely going to have to do some modifications to put this DLE 20 on here. Now, if you want to run a, a nitro engine on yours, by all means, go right ahead. I'll still show you how to balance and everything. Uh, this is going to be quite a bit of work, but uh, I'm going to go ahead with my DLE 20 on mine, even though it, it's a little bit extra work, but it, it'll turn out fine. But uh, we may have to do some reinforcing on this firewall since we're going to have to cut out a pretty good hole right here for that carburetor to set back in there, which will actually slide the fuel tank back a little bit too. So, but the center of gravity, this is going to be a heavy, pretty heavy engine. It calls for up to a 100, uh, so this is a little more than a 120 size, so we're going to have a, quite a bit of extra weight. Plus, we've got the uh, uh, electronic ignition to go up here, so with that, uh, I'm hoping this thing balances out pretty good where we don't have to add a lot of weight to it. And that was another reason I went ahead and I'm going to put the servos in the very tail of it instead of a pull-pull because -pull, I, I want that weight back there from the servos to try to balance this out. Well, we won't have any idea how it's going to balance until we get it all put together, but we'll just go from there. If we have to add some weight to one end or the other, we'll do it. But uh, right now we're going to work on getting a pattern made for this, and I'll show you how to do that uh, and uh, get this all situated before we start the rest of it.